When it comes to debugging, third-party libraries and frameworks uh, act like black boxes. So most incompatibilities in APIs can be found out during coding itself. But uh, over a longer time, this cannot be assumed because uh, during upgrades, some framework developers are forced to break the backward compatibility based on their roadmaps. So uh, this issue can become a bottleneck once you are forced to upgrade your version of that particular framework. So security patches will leave you no option but to upgrade immediately. So one of the examples would be uh, the way Spark, Apache Spark works. So Apache Spark version 2.x was bound to uh, Scala 2.12. And when Scala moved to 2.13, they made significant changes to the language itself. So Spark 2.x was never compatible with uh, 2.13. Scala 2.13. So one had to use a higher version of uh, Spark if uh, they wanted to move to uh, the new features, which basically meant upgrading the Scala, which meant upgrading the Java version as well, because the JVM uh, version had to be upgraded. Now, the problem was that uh, after a certain point, Oracle decided that uh, the Oracle JDK will be uh, considered licensed it will no longer be available for free. So this basically meant that everyone had to shift to OpenJDK. Now there were certain enterprise performance APIs in the Oracle JDK, which were not present in OpenJDK. So everyone had to migrate their code to OpenJDK and lose out on performance and certain API breakages. So basically the issue which started with uh, upgrading Spark ended up with fixing code uh, for JVM compatibility. So these kind of things happen. So in case of strongly typed languages, the API breakages will be found at build time itself, which is a, which is one of the reasons why strongly typed languages like Java, C++ are preferred. But in case of interpreted languages, like uh, this can be tricky for like things like Python, Perl, these things become really tricky because if you have slightly different version of package on the deployment environment compared to your dev environment, uh, things will break only at the runtime. So another uh, thing is uh, how in general uh, the developers are aligning themselves to catch these issues early in the development pipeline. So that is a uh, onus on the developers themselves as to how they are ensuring their testing in the target environment. This can be achieved in multiple ways through the CI CD framework. But developers need to start thinking in those terms. That is the first uh, requirement. So another reminder is the uh, usage of the latest tag when you're working with the container frameworks. So sometimes developers can choose latest tag and dependency management tools to avoid uh, problems with newer tool chains and compatibility issues uh, coming from the dependencies. But using latest can keep pulling a lot of untested code. So as we can see in the NPM ecosystem with the Node.js and other dynamically typed languages ecosystem, even in Maven the problem exists, but uh, as I said that at runtime, instead of runtime it will get caught at the compile time. Most of the times it will get caught at the compile time. So the trade-off needs to be made between stability and ease of maintenance. So if you are going for stability, you hard code the versions that you will always be working with these versions of software. And if those are not found in the target environment, you throw an error and uh, deal with it during the CI phase, the continuous integration build phase itself. You don't rely on assumption that things will be available at the runtime. If you are shipping your Docker image, bind them to fixed versions of packages that are getting pulled from the upstream. Otherwise, you are leaving a, a runtime issue open. So, so this kind of mechanism applies to Docker-based images and tool chains uh, specifically. So mostly the updates for security and performance uh, will force an immediate action from your side. So the certain uh, framework features which are release-based development is often uh, avoided. So uh, for uh, for example, like holding back a feature because a certain language plans to release some API in the next six months. Now that is not a good strategy. 
right so either you reimplement the feature with the existing technology and port it to the newer api later or just discard the feature because uh, it's bad design it's as simple as that you your design cannot be dependent on the language so it is a very slippery slope because another thing which i would like to just sidestep and remind you is that a lot of people uh, work with programming languages purely from a interview perspective that if it is going to be asked in interview only then it is of use to me otherwise it's pointless or they keep reading blogs which are completely out of context of design of their product and they try to force features of language into the code when it's not necessary so the, the, these situations make debugging harder because it is an unnatural uh, course of code that exists in that code path and one uh, while debugging one wonders why is it so complicated why are we using this particular framework feature when uh, something could have been written as a simple for loop so avoid such things during design remember the idea of programming is to make things simpler if you are complicating it for sake of uh, recognition during interviews uh, it defeats the purpose you are on the wrong track please don't uh, do that